Hi everyone, welcome to Home Arena Collectibles. Today I'm going to be doing a review of the Transformers Age of Extinction Generations High Octane Bumblebee. Now this figure is a deluxe class Bumblebee that is slightly smaller than older movie figure Bumblebees. But before we get into the figure itself, let's have a look at the box. As you can see, it has a great Bumblebee artwork there, an awesome Transformers 4 logo. And then we have the nice... Uh, Transformers logo right there to the uh, the word and that looks really awesome with the uh, the white strip in the back so it gives you a really nice uh, effect there and uh, as you can see is very well shown in this new style package so on the side here it just says Transformers Generations Deluxe Class Series M4001 and then on the back here we have uh, changes in 18 steps, a very nice image of Bumblebee in both of his modes and then we have Crosshairs, Dinobot Slug and Scorn and then at the top here we also have a bio to avoid detection Bumblebee takes on a different form disguising himself as a supercharged muscle car not sure exactly how hidden you're going to be as a muscle car but obviously these are the known colours for Bumblebee stealth mode if you watch uh, uh, Transformers Prime and things like that too so let's get this thing open and see how cool this is because uh, I'm actually really excited for this figure sorry if you can hear some background noise guys but it is raining outside but here is Bumblebee in his vehicle mode he is a uh, Camaro SS uh, from the 70s I believe and on the box on the back of the box it actually said uh, General Motors approved basically you know it had their logo on there so that means that they can actually use the accurate car designs and not just something that's close to it but it also means that they can actually use logos and whatnot now as you can see there's no logo on the front of Bumblebee here but if I bring it in nice and close and get some focus on there uh, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it I think you can right in the middle it does actually say SS there because it's a Camaro SS um, it looks absolutely fantastic this vehicle mode does as you can see a very nice uh, matte black sort of design here uh, you have Autobot logos on the left and right and then we also have gunmetal painted um, alloys which look awesome they've got loads of little rivet details and all the little nuts and whatnot um, that looks really cool clear windows always a fan of clear windows on cars but they've even included the rear window. That's something that they normally paint over, but I'm very happy that they did actually leave that clear. And it even has a couple of little mold molded on uh, lines down there. Uh, very nice. Uh, the doors uh, do open, and they have very nice interior door design in there as well. Not only do you get a handle, but you get the speaker down here, and you get the little door well where you can uh, store some stuff, I guess. Um, so yeah, very very nice interior design. Obviously you don't get anything inside there, um, you just get a load of Bumblebee's hips. But uh, very nice uh, design there on the inside of the doors. Uh, something to be wary of when you're transforming this back into vehicle mode. Uh, these tab in, because it's a clear peg here and a clear hole here, they don't always line up so don't get, don't just really force it in there just rest it and just uh, find it and it'll clip in like that but um, if you can't you know it, it looks fine if the doors just a little bit loose it, it doesn't really make much of a difference plus if you can't get it to clip in I mean it looks great just posed with the door open like that that looks great to me but uh, carrying on anyway it has very nice detail down here at uh, the front of the car as I said no logo but you have a very nice grill there the lines across uh, no headlights obviously on this particular version um, moving around to the back no brake lights it would have been nice if we'd have had some brake lights maybe a license plate but it's always a little something that you can touch up yourself if you want the SS logo it would have been nice if that was silver uh, just so that it pops because it's quite small but uh, it's perfectly fine as it is I really like this little uh, yellow spoiler right here but uh, without further ado I think we should get to transforming this guy so to transform Bumblebee what we're gonna do to start off is open up the doors and get the front end all unfolded so open doors come to the front here and we're gonna just uh, pull apart this front section which is going to enable us to uh, just bring these flaps up a little bit, you don't have to but I, I like to 
and then that will also allow you to m uh, pull open these side panels right here which were connected to the front and then as you can see on the underneath here we have the arms so what we're going to do is we're going to pull these arms up a little bit and it's really nice because in, in the neck there he has a little gap of where this missile fits uh, you can take the missile out if you want to but as you can see great weapon storage inside so we're going to untab the arms and we're going to bring them up and fold them out as we do it very stiff uh, these arm joints are so be careful with them but once you've got the arms folded out out of the way we can now come round to the back now the uh, windscreen is tabbed in to the front right there and what we're going to do is we're going to untab these back sections which will form the legs and we can just bring them down a little and straighten them out like so just so that we have some clearance with this back piece and we're going to just bring this back piece up and out of the way for clearance for this now we're going to bring this down which is going to, well once we've uh, moved these out of the way, you just pull them down they're on little uh, tabs that just rotate down so that's just this front piece pulled down as we bring this up as you can see the head pushes those panels open so like I said earlier you don't need to open them yourself but uh, it can be nice to do so and then what we're going to do here straighten the legs out a little bit fully open these panels and this chest piece clips in down here so we got this big hole let's just get a bit more focus going right here so we got this big hole and we've got the two pegs on each one of these it can be a little fiddly but um, just try and get them together like so and push them both straight in and then just showing you clipping in the second one here push that in there and in it goes so yeah a little fiddly um, but that is the hardest part of the transformation and I wouldn't exactly call that too hard it takes a little bit of time but the more you get used to it the more you'll uh, know exactly how that uh, works and fits together so I'm just going to straighten out the arms a little here and bring them down open up the flaps and turn the head and then we're going to come to this back section now it actually has, uh, mine's very stiff um, so it's going to look harder on camera than yours probably will be um, but as you can see the back section rotates on this hinge right here but as you can see it's on a hinge inside here, I'll get some focus in there for you it's in a hinge in there so this piece is going to fold over this piece to collapse it down a little bit so it's going to come up and it's going to fold up and over like so uh, it can go a little bit more I think there we go right so then this entire piece then flips up and sits between the uh, the doors on the back so now we're going to straighten out the legs a little bit and uh, the wings I like to just keep the doors a little bit back so that it gives him arms uh, a bit more room and it just looks a little bit more dynamic than just being straight and then down here for the legs what you want to do is push the foot and the back piece and the foot's going to rotate down and the back piece flips up now this is the official transformation uh, but it's not the transformation that everyone uses because as you can see it makes his feet look quite small down here so I like to just keep this folded back down where it was although you lose that tiny little bit of detail right there and you're opening up the leg a little bit more this is a small figure so that is I know it looks like a huge gap on camera but that is actually a very small gap plus you're most likely going to be standing sort of above this guy um, so you're not actually going to see the gap just as much you'll be looking at it from sort of like the camera angle here uh, and you're not going to see that gap very much but anyway here is Bumblebee in his robot mode and it does look fantastic just like the vehicle mode uh, I would say that this is definitely the best ever version of a movie Bumblebee the older versions of Bumblebee um, I find that the Transformers 1 film did a pretty good job with them uh, but I do find that the more modern versions of the Camaro, they kind of, uh, you know, in the second and third film, like, 
the chest of Bumblebee is really, really, really bulky. It's really big. And then he's got his little legs and his little arms. And he just doesn't really look right. For a deluxe figure to have a chest that big and to be stand that small, obviously, he, he's a little bigger in the movie. Um, I felt that it really didn't do him justice. But with this figure, we're back to a very slimmed down look uh, in the chest area. So if I straighten him out a little bit here, hopefully you'll see what I mean. Um, it's it's very streamlined to me. Uh, I really do enjoy the look of this thing. So if I just turn this round, his uh, shoulders are very stiff. But as you can see, I know he's got a backpack, but it's not as big uh, as older bumblebees, I don't think, really. And I think it's very acceptable. Um, it, it fills him out quite well, and I, I think it. I think they've done a pretty good job uh, with this backpack. Now, the chest, uh, as you can see, um, it's it's pretty much in line with his body. He's a very sleek bumblebee, whereas older chests, I I feel they were very very wide, and then it just came in for some little legs. And I just think that this guy overall. Just he has a much better sort of um, film appearance, you know. He's just got much better proportions, uh, and also just standing straight, just like a lot of other people have mentioned. Um, he looks good, however you pose him. He sort of the way that he's he's got curves on his shoulders there and everything, and all the detail and everything. He he really does look a lot like. Uh, Bumblebee, that, that character comes across. Uh, one major drawback, yes, this is attached to his arm. Um, it's a flick fire missile that the actual missile itself is not very good, I don't feel. Um, I'm fine with flick fire missiles, um, but you know, this is very flimsy. Um, if you watch Sharpness Prime's review, I think it was, he had a very, very, very bent one. This is slightly bent. Um, it's It's not amazing. But I do actually find that the look of it is not that bad. I think that that looks perfectly fine being on his arm. I prefer it if he had a gun that you could attach and detach. But, you know, I'm, I'm fine with that being there. And I think it looks perfectly fine just like that. Uh, and if you actually look at some of the trailers, uh, the gun that he has, it sort of looks like a kind of claw. Um, it reminds me a lot of the Tesla coil for a Ratchet & Clank, if you remember that gun. Um, but it's sort of like this, you know, it's it's open like a claw. I think he holds it in his left hand in the trailer anyway, but uh, or, or in the promo shots or whatever it is. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's sort of, it doesn't really resemble it, but at least you got that hole there, you know, showing that sort of claw. So if you want to pretend it's that, hey, pretend it's that. But it is in a nice gunmetal, just like his arms here, his shoulders. I'm going to bring it in for some close detail here. Um, you know, really, really nice that they've done all of this in gunmetal. Normally, that would just be grey or black. Uh, even gunmetal uh, down here, um, on the end of the toes here, they have just gone for black round here. Um, really, really very nice. I love the detail on these arms here. The face, he has an incredible head sculpt. He does have light piping, even though his eyes are painted blue. Uh, and it is the entire back of his head. Uh, there is a little bit of light piping, like it does actually light his eyes up, but because the paint's there, it doesn't obviously give you a full on light piping effect. I like the design down there in the uh, the chest area, it's not too open. And in the arms here, you can see as you lift the arm up, uh, if I just move that out of the way, you can actually see it's got a black piece in here. And it has actually looks like gears and whatnot, so they've actually given that piece a little bit of detail. Uh, and that is normally what will happen if you move the arms up. Uh, normally, you will move that hinge there, which is the transformation hinge, instead of the actual shoulder hinge here, because it is on a tighter ratchet. Uh, but I'm glad that it's on a ratchet, it's going to hold it in much, much better. Uh, the arms here then do rotate at the uh, elbow here and have up and down ratchet right there, doesn't move at the wrist or anything, that is moulded. No waist joint even though, you know, really they could have put a cut there, it doesn't matter though. Um, the head is on a ball joint, so that's very nice. Down here at the hips they move forward, back and all the way out on a ratchet, he has a knee 
right here, and then the foot can go up and down, and then due to transformation you have this joint right here too. So uh, plenty of articulation on this guy. Um, remember you can pose these sort of flat here, or you can bring them out a little bit, you know, you can do whatever you want with those, but I really do think that this thing looks fantastic from all angles. Um, it's got a fairly simple transformation, but uh, it does keep up with uh, general uh, generation sort of transformations. Um, and I really do think that they have stepped up their game in terms of having a figure for everyone. You know, this figure, although it's sort of, it's in the generations line, so it's sort of targeted towards collectors, it's got a simple enough transformation and a, a low enough price and everything that obviously you can go and give this to your to your kids and your teenagers and whatnot. Um, so the older kids who do want to transform something have some great figures right here. And as for a size comparison, here he is next to the Fall of Cybertron Shockwave, uh, which is a sort of a small um, size generations figure. I mean, they did sort of make them a little bit smaller when it came to the uh, the game figures, War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron. Uh, they have started to sort of make them a little bit bigger now again. We're certainly seeing bigger voyages, obviously. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's a good scale uh, for all your other generations figures. So no longer will you get these massively complicated movie figures um, that then are slightly bigger than all your generations stuff. So nothing really uh, suits one another in a display. You know, they're going to be the same uh, scale as your other generations figures. Um, and certainly in great scale with other Age of Extinction figures. So overall, I definitely do think that this figure has amazing paint apps, a great transformation. It is lacking, obviously, uh, a detachable gun. That would be very nice if we had a movie-accurate gun that we could actually detach or maybe put in its hand or something. Um, but it doesn't matter too much. This actually looks good. And I do find that with all of these Age of Extinction figures, uh, the little nitpicks that you have from watching reviews, like for example Optimus Prime's blue on the top of his arms, crosshairs not having the painted red and blue and whatnot on his uh, on his head and whatnot, you know, they are actually just nothing. As soon as you pick them up, they are so much better in hand, uh, and you can really see the detail so much better. You're not going to see nowhere near as much of the detail that I can see in hand right now. So I recommend that you pick this up massively, especially if you have no previous movie bumblebees. This is an awesome addition to your collection. And uh, even if you plan on getting the other bumblebee that will come out, obviously we'll get that new design, just like in the first film. When we get both bumblebees, we'll see that in this line, I'm sure. Uh, definitely pick this up for the vehicle mode, because that is a very awesome vehicle mode. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. As I said, 100% recommended. And I'll see you in the next review, which will be Crosshairs. So thanks for watching, guys. If you want to stay up to date with all of my new figures and all upcoming reviews, follow me on Twitter, where you'll see uh, when my YouTube videos go live, and you'll also see all of my Instagram posts. But if you do have Instagram, go ahead and follow me on Instagram, and uh, you'll find those links on my homepage on my channel. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.